Hello YouTube, welcome back to Kind Heart Homestead. I made it back up here to our off-grid property in the mountains of Virginia. And I definitely plan to install the windows, which shouldn't be too difficult because the three larger windows are kind of have identical dimensions and framing. The only tricky one might be the one in the bathroom that needs to be centered behind the toilet. And that one's just gonna have to be custom framed to get it exact in there. Whereas the other ones, I can take the easy route and use some of the wall framing that is already there and uh, base my dimensions and layout around that. But as you can see here, I'm in the shady side. This is the east side of the shed, which I haven't really spent much time on. You can see behind me, the overhang is pretty vacant. All I have here is the two by fours that double across the last rafter just to sort of hold up the sheathing. And that's good enough for me to stand up there and move around a bit, but it's not nearly as strong as it would be with blocking. So I'm going to cut two by six scraps, probably the two by sixes that I used as uh, form boards for the concrete slab. I'm going to cut those around 23 inches or maybe closer to 22 and a half. I've actually measured every two feet and wrote those measurements on the wall. And I want them to be pretty snug so they can do their job and really make this section rigid. So I'm going to go ahead and start that now. I have all my tools and I saw horses here on the shady side. And I'm going to uh, try to knock this out before I start the windows. So stick around and I hope you enjoy this episode. Thanks. I wanted to try to show you guys how I cut these triangles for the gable end. All right, so the height of the triangle needs to be 22 and three quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that. So 22 and three quarters is the height, but then left to right, it needs to be six feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that. Using my square, 
I can find the 18.5 degrees, which is what my roof pitch is. And this doesn't need to be exact, but I want to continue this line. So I have the beginning and the ending of this line. And now here's the trick. If I cut it like this, there's no nailing surfaces up there. I suppose unless I added some blocking. What I want to do is cut it long. So cut it past this line. And then I'm going to notch it out for each of the blocks. That way I can put nails in between the blocks and it's going to get nailed directly to the last roof rafter assembly I have on each side of the building. So I'm going to measure, let's just do three inches arbitrarily. So three inches up from this line on both ends. I'm going to do the 18.5 degrees again. And then all I had to do was snap a line. Let's just double check. We've got six feet. with 22 and three quarters. And then consistently, this is a three inch addition. Three inches vertically. It's important to measure the three inches in the exact same direction on both ends because the way I guess the hypotenuse works is like, even if it's just three inches on this side, it's going to be a lot longer of a difference on this side. So I'm measuring it to the top three inches. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this and then we'll worry about notching it later. I'm tacking this triangular piece of sheathing three inches below its intended destination because the blocks are in the way. I need to transfer lines so I know where to cut notches to fit around these blocks. But the blocks are slanted because of the 18.5 degree pitch. This means I have to use my level to transfer their locations perfectly vertically because I just need to slide this triangular piece straight up. I'm cutting outside the lines to make these notches a bit bigger, just in case there's any sort of inconsistencies in the block or any sort of weird angles. I can always fill these gaps later with some sort of sealant, but for now all I'm really worried about is having a nailing surface for the sheathing.
what you just saw me do was snap a chalk line so I know where to put a 2x4 on the wall and that's just a mounting surface for the vented soffit that I plan to staple to the sub fascia. In order to know where I put the chalk line, first I put this underneath and essentially projected the plane of the bottom of the sub fascia over to the sheathing. And the reason I needed to go ahead and do this was because I need to make sure not to put the windows too high. Obviously, I don't want them to be up inside of the soffit, but I also need to make sure there's enough room between the soffit and the window for the J flashing or whatever the window trim is called for the metal panels. I'm using the same type of metal panels on the walls as I'm using on the roof, and I don't have any experience with metal siding. It was a bit stressful trying to figure out what size windows to use. After comparing several windows throughout a few different Home Depot and Lowe's stores, I decided on these ones because the rough opening width made the most sense with my existing stud spacing. So hopefully these are not too much of a pain to install and I hope they serve us well in the long term. It's the next morning. We had a large thunderstorm last night. Wasn't in the forecast, but I'm getting kind of used to that. I planned these trips around the weather to try to be here in dry conditions, but of course it always rains and uh, I had the rain fly nearby to throw on the tent. Most of my tools and supplies were either in this building, which is relatively dried in, or in my wagon, which each night I pull a piece of zip board and put it on top of the wagon uh, just to prevent condensation from getting my tools wet but it works perfectly for rain as well anyway you can see here i unloaded the windows they're leaning behind me it says not to store them with these wrappers on so before it gets too hot out i want to open these up check them for any manufacturing defects and then i want to measure them and get the rough framing started the reason they say not to store these with the plastic on is because they can overheat in hot weather and then this vinyl framing can warp. The packaging has the rough opening and the actual dimensions listed. It says the rough opening is 28 by 54. The actual framing of the frame of the window is 27 and a half by 53 and a half. That means they added a half inch to each dimension, which is a quarter inch gap, I guess you could say, on every side of the window. But I don't want to necessarily take their word for it because these are off-the-shelf windows from Lowe's. I don't know what their manufacturing quality control tolerances are. I'm going to measure and double check. It's a sixteenth of an inch longer in every dimension than they said it was. I feel like that's fine. Having an extra half inch is going to be plenty. And then I can shim it square if I need to. Uh, so that's it, I'm gonna get started. So I'm trying to do some basic investigating, trying to figure out where within the wall the windows should sit. Obviously, I can't have them flush with the double top plate because they need a header. They need a structural header. I believe code says that if you have less than a three foot wide span, you can get away with four by four uh, as a header, which is the equivalent of two two by fours standing vertically. Um, so basically I only need three and a half inches. I actually need to measure down at least seven inches from the top of the second top plate. And it looks like a header would barely fit there, but I have to worry about the uh, J channel trim that goes around the window. While it's not ideal to have a sliver of siding between the soffit and the window, I feel like it's necessary so I have that buffer. Because I, I don't know exactly how tall the trim channel is going to be. 
I'm going to add a few inches to that seven inch measurement. I'm actually just gonna round up to one foot. That's gonna be an easy measurement. Let me go ahead and mark that. There's 12 inches. We have the double top plate. I measured from the top of that down seven inches because that's where the chalk line is that represents the soffit on the outside. But I can't see that from in here. So I had to translate that from outside just on the drawing. But I'm adding an extra five inches just to account for any sort of buffer and trim that goes between the soffit and the window. The header is going to be in there, but that's not going to be visible from the outside. It's going to be above the rough opening. The rough opening is designated here with the 54 inch height that the manufacturer suggests we use. Below that, similar to the header, there's a 2x4 but it's flat instead of vertical and that won't be visible from the outside. It's not part of the rough opening, it goes beyond the rough opening. So an inch and a half for that board and then from there to the floor is 30.5 inches. So this is the beginning of my cut plan, um, but this only takes into account the vertical measurements. So let's take this uh, windowsill board, for example. Sorry, I can't really draw a straight line on this Ripley cardboard. Well, the bottom of the window rough opening is 28, but let's go ahead and say 31 because we need to add an inch and a half to each side because of these jack studs here and here. That's a total of three inches because of the way I'm framing this. The jack studs are going to be within the framing. What I mean by that is uh, under the header, under the windowsill, above the windowsill. I marked a level line on the studs that represent where to cut the boards below the windowsill. I can get through most of the 2x4s with my circular saw, but I'll have to wrap up the rest of the cut later with my oscillating tool. Running my oscillating tool to cut through studs when there's already sheathing on it is a bit of a tricky situation because I don't want to accidentally pierce through the sheathing and compromise the waterproof integrity. But thankfully my oscillating tool, even though the blade's not long enough, it has the ability to mount the blade position in a 90 degree fashion. That way I can come in from the side and hopefully avoid the sheathing. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that 31 divides into 93 three times evenly. So out of one of my studs, I'm able to produce three windowsill pieces with zero waste. In this case, I'm using two of them to box in the header, and then the third acts as a windowsill.
So here I'm using a framing square to draw a line on my bottom plate that would center the window behind the toilet drain. This would essentially center the window with the toilet. Well, I didn't quite make the progress that I was hoping to, but I did get a lot of practice on installing the window framing. I'll go ahead and show you what I've been working on. Here's one behind me. The only one struggle I really ran into was uh, this little window in the back corner behind the toilet. It's very close to the corner and I'm reluctant to put the last stud, the king stud up next to the header because then I won't be able to get any insulation in there. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe ripping a piece of rigid foam, shoving it back there before I put the framing in. And then I might be able to fit the nozzle of a spray foam bottle in afterwards to finish it out with whatever I need to put in there. But for now, I'd say this is pretty good. Obviously I don't wanna start cutting holes into it unless I have the time to install the windows. But that'll just have to wait till next time. Now that I know where the studs are going to be, I can finish the nailing patterns in the field of the zip sheathing. If you recall from a few episodes ago when I was installing this, I only nailed the seams. I tried to put nails every four to six inches around the full perimeter. And for these window installations, I'm only touching the studs that are not secured to anything that are just in the middle of the boards. I've done the two side windows symmetrically. This one here has to be off center just because that's the way that the, uh, the studs are working. I was determined to use an existing stud as the king stud on one side. So I'm not necessarily centering the windows based on anything. I'm just trying to utilize studs that are already there because if I start adding custom studs to center windows, then I have to customize more bats of insulation. So I'm trying to keep the 16 inch on center bats as standard as possible. And I'm trying to keep the sheathing nailed along the seams. Anyway, uh, if you wanna see the window installation, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time on Kind Heart Homestead. Thanks a lot. Yeah.